We thank God for this glorious money that he has allowed us to see. How was your night? I think it was not resounding because only few people could tell us how the night was. How was your night? We, God is the owner of each day and he has given us the privilege to share in the day. It's a great honor. We give him all the glory. Once again, we congratulate and rejoice with the seminary president on the occasion of his Diamond Jubilee anniversary, the 68th birthday of the seminary president. You see that the way he walked in is quite different from the way he used to walk in. <laughs> Though the moderator of the program has forbidden anybody's song, but I want to humbly overrule him. As we stand up together and sing the body song for the, the president of the seminary. Congratulations. Please be seated. I don't know the all we are going to use in the evening. But the celebrant will be announcing to that was later. So wash your smooth stomach for a great evening. We wish you many happy returns, long life and prosperity. May you see your children's children in the mighty name of Jesus. I am asked to speak on ministering with fear and trembling. And of course, a lot have been said about this. The chairman of the convention has already opened us up on this. And uh, when Bagbile was speaking yesterday about the God of Covenant, he started pointing attention to that direction or the way we need to undo with diligent care the ministry the Lord has committed to our hands. 
And I pray that God will help me to take this further this morning in the name of Jesus. So I will pray together. Living Father, your word says the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding also to the simple. I pray that you will give us light through your word this morning. And through your word also, our understanding of your truth shall be clearer in the name of Jesus. Bless all of us this morning. And each time we, be, we appear before you, may you make us blessed people in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answer prayer, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a book that has been given to you. If I want to follow that one, I will not leave this place quickly. So I have tried to do a summary of what I'm presenting and uh, add a few other things as I was doing the summary that the Lord ministered to me, which may not be exactly there. Ministering with fear and trembling. And turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 5. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 5. And let's stop movement up and down, up and down, unless you are just coming in. And I want to urge you next time, don't come late again. There is nobody nursing baby among the pastors. So I don't know why you should be coming late. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 5. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of, of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Ministering with fear and trembling here calls attention, first of all, to the seriousness and the sacredness of the call the Lord has handed over to us. And the awesomeness, in the other hand, of the Lord God himself, who has called us into the ministry. Ministering with fear Fear and trembling equally points our attention to the sure punishment that will be the consequence of careless handling of such important ministry in the end. Beloved, ministering with fear and trembling is about sanctifying the Lord God who gave us the ministry to, so that His name and his name alone might be hallowed among men and glorified through our ministries. That is, ministering ministry with fear and trembling is all about doing the ministry with utmost compliance to the rules and regulations of ministry according to the scriptures without deviation at all, either to the right or to the left. If you find it very hard in understanding what I'm saying about what ministering with fear and trembling is all about, let me give an illustration from the pages of the Word of God. In the book of Leviticus chapter 10, from verse 1 to verse 3, we 
See there, an illustration of two individual ministers who decided to minister without fear and trembling. That is, they handled the glorious ministry the Lord conferred on them with levity. They trivialized it. It didn't matter to them. They didn't only lose the ministry, but they lost their lives as well. Leviticus chapter 10, from verse 1 to verse 3. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them a censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and overstrain fire before the Lord which he commanded not and there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord then Moses said unto Aaron this is that the Lord spake Say, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron heard his peace. As the ministry can lift us, the way we handle the ministry can also mark us, mark us completely. It is better not to respond to ministry at all than to handle the ministry carelessly. I have a friend who is a Pentecostal minister. We were ministering to the Lord together in Lagos one year. And the banner for another crusade was brought to him, printed by a printer in the banner. And when he saw mistakes which came from the painter on the on the posters, he became very, very angry, the anger that I never saw in him before. I said, Why? He was very angry. And I said, Why? And he said, Brother, this man is messing up my life. My ministry is my life. Does not take his own job seriously. He cannot, he must not assume that I don't take my ministry seriously. It's messing up my life. This is not the way, the best way I should handle what God has given to me. I learned a lesson. That it is full hardy for anyone to think that the ministry can be handled anyhow. It is about your life. And he can lead a minister, he can also marry him forever and ever. Abiu and Nadab were given the opportunity of ministry. And let me trace the reason. The Lord will not forgive them for this. Because it was a sin. Of disobedience against the Holy Spirit. That instructed them. About their assignment. In the book of Leviticus. Chapter 16. The Lord already gave instruction about how the fire to be used at the altar should be God's. And I want us to see it there. In Leviticus chapter 16, verses 12 to 13, the Bible says, And if I take a censer full of burning coals of fire from all the altar before the Lord, you see, the fire, the fire was supposed to come from the fire already burning at the altar. 
which means that the fire to be used for the sacrifice must have been a consecrated fire. Not an ordinary fire. They trivialize the fire at the altar to be equal to any other fire. They were wiser than God. Let me read that again. And if I take a censer full of burning coals or fire from all the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beating small, and bring it within the veil. And if I put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, please take care of the wall, take note of the wall before the law, fire before the law, fire before the law. Is consecrated fire. And I believe that fire was the Lord himself. It was the Lord himself. And that cannot be compared to any other fire elsewhere. It's like idolatry for them to have used another fire and equate it to the fire burning before the Lord at the altar. We trivialize certain things that is about that may be about life and death concerning our ministries. And it's a good incense upon the fire before the Lord that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat. That is upon the testimony that he died not. Hello? The beginner was already there. If you play pranks or disobey to take this fire from the fire before the Lord, what is the outcome of it? Death. Hmm. I pray none of us in ministry we trivialize our death. We trivialize the Lord. We know too much. We argue too much. You cannot argue about the commandment of the Lord. The partnership into which he has called us is not a partnership of co-equals. Hello? Is not a partnership of co equal, is a partnership for which we must accept him in his own terms and at his own terms, not at our own terms at all. You will have to consider it very seriously whether you will be able to go along this journey with him. about the standard, about his commandment. His commandment in the partnership, in the relationship, is to be obeyed. Why? Because he's perfect, and you that is joining him is imperfect. So he will not accept your terms. Because he's a God of standard. He doesn't want you to suggest to him he is not only your maker. He is self-existent. He doesn't need anybody to assist. So what were the sins of Nadab and Rabiu? Number one. I said, I told you they did not take the fire from the altar. I specified by the law, but brought strange fire. What is that strange fire? Another name for that fire is unauthorized fire. Every sacred assignment committed to us must be carried out according to job description. Hello? It was because carried out an assignment which was not his duty which he was not commanded to do no good in human eyes 
that the Lord struck him down. Some of us associate pastors. You become wiser than the pastor of the church. What we call associate is somebody, something attached to something. You are not divine. You are the branch. Hello? You are the branch. The pastor of that church is the pastor. And I think it's because of inability to stay with your job duty that the issue of senior pastor came. So that you will know that you are not the pastor of the... There is only one flock always and one shepherd. The rest of you are at work under that shepherd. You are pastoral team. Hello? You are pastoral team. And you have to get your job description. Tell by your job description. Don't go and whip up sentiment within the church to let people believe you can do it better. And you have a method. This one is an outdated person. You have been using this man for a long time. The church, you need a change. You need to upgrade. He has old ideas. We are the younger ones. Is it your job duty? God gave instruction clear enough. And they decided to over strange fire. The job that is not your own if you have unnecessary seal to go and carry it out, the repercussion will be regrettable. So hear from the law. What you are not assigned to do by the law, don't be found doing it. Let me ask you this question. Are you at God's ordained duty post presently or you manipulated the system to be there. Is that God's ordained duty post for you? How can you confirm to me that God wants you at where you are? What sustains a man called by God at the time of trial is the conviction of the call to the assignment. If God did not come to me to convince me before the convention chose me, if God did not show me that revelation at Houston, Texas in 2015, how I was voted into office as camp president, when these evil people rose up, I will have fallen flat. I will have thrown in the tower. I wouldn't have been able to complete the work of cleansing the system that God sent me to do. I will say, well, I'm not receiving salary there. I'm not receiving allowance. What's my problem? I'm no longer doing anything. Is God's assignment for me? Not every assignment is easy. In fact, none is easy. You, you think that the assignment of Jesus Christ when he came here in the flesh was an easy one? Even to become flesh, human being, was really degrading. God himself becoming man, walking like man, being limited like man, being insulted by the, the people he created, the works of his hands. Not only that, was it easy when he said, let them cause pause over me. Say, let them score, Father. Let it pass over me. It's too difficult. But he said, if it is your will that I should drink it, then I'm ready. Ask yourself again, are you at your deep depots? And are you the... Let me remind us again. God will not hold you accountable for what he has not handed over to you. He will not. 
He will not. He will not. Number two, mistake of Nadab and Habil. In their minds, they did not sanctify God. Strange mindset was their error, my, their great error in ministry. They didn't have the right mind for ministry. Strange mindset. In their mind, they didn't sanctify God. This led to their disobedience of offering whatever fire that pleased them. It is a sanctified life that can sanctify God. If you are called into the ministry and you are not sanctified, your ministry cannot sanctify God and be a blessing to people. We cannot serve God with dirty mindset. It is compelling for us to be holy for the one who has called us to walk with him is holy. First Peter chapter 1 you read it from verse 13 downwards. Are you walking right? Am I walking right? I need to underscore it here that the life of the minister is preserved inside authorized fire. Otherwise, he or she has exposed himself or herself to untimely death. I think somebody heard that. The life of the minister, the immunity of the minister is inside the offering of authorized fire. Otherwise, that minister had deliberately exposed himself or herself to untimely death. The law of God is clear. In this presentation, therefore, I will endeavor to urge my hearer to do their best by handling the gospel ministry with fear and trembling so as to receive the words in the end. Key issues in the passage that we first of all read, the, the book of the Corinthians that first of all read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. Let me bring out some key issues for us to consider. Number one, the object of our ministry must be Christ and his glory. If we want to minister with fear and trembling, which is the acceptable style of ministry, the object of our ministry must be Christ and his glory. Paul said that his main preoccupation in ministry was not in excellency of speech, nor display of human wisdom, but the testimony of Christ. We must bear testimony to Christ's life, bear testimony to his death, bear testimony to his resurrection, bear testimony to his ascension, and bear testimony to his second coming. He must be presented as the savior of the world and not as a savior. Hello? Jesus is not a savior. Jesus is the savior. No alternative. The Bible says, he who does not believe is already condemned. The inclusivity now that we are, we are teaching in theology is erroneous, is a demonized theology. It's gutter theology. It's alien to our own tradition as Baptists. It's not the gospel. Jesus is the exclusive savior not one of the saviors. So we must point the attention of people to him, not to ourselves. No matter how good and highly anointed I may be and you may be, you are not the savior. 
You can't save anyone. I can't. He must be presented as the Savior. We must magnify him always in our ministries, not ourselves. He must increase while we must decrease. He is the object, not us. Attention of all must be pointed to the law. People must know nothing other than Christ, as Paul says in this passage that we have read. Then I can ask myself, every time I stand behind the pulpit, do I make Christ known? If you are not making Christ known, you are not ministering with fear and trembling. Number two, we must minister with the consciousness that of our own, we can do nothing because of our human frailties, human weaknesses. That was the reason Paul said, when I came to you, I came to you with, in, with my human weaknesses. Not in strength, not in power of my own. There's called for total dependence on him and him alone. In prayer, in fasting, in consistent Bible study, that is how we can gain power with him and with walk in the spirit. Some these days are trusting diabolical powers. Because they don't want to follow the way of God to get power with him. Some people are not working for Christ. Nor is there any reward for them in eternity but damnation. Lying wonders is going to attract severe punishment. Why do we have to bury cows at the foundation of the church? Is he a god of cows? Is it a cows ministry? Why should a minister of the gospel be part of secret society? Or his wife a witch? Why? For what reason? Did the people in secret society call you into ministry? How can they empower you? We must depend on him, look up to him always. And this calls for humility. It also calls for praise to God. Because he had decided to choose the best things of this world for glorious and noble assignment. Why should somebody call somebody? I mean, why should God call somebody from a stark village like me to minister? Why? In terms of stature and everything, I'm not qualified to be a minister. I'm not. I'm not. Why should he be, be interested in somebody who will stand behind the pulpit and people will not see him? <laughs> Why? Can't he get somebody better? Why should you make me president of the convention and uh, president of camp when people will be mistaking other people for me when we are working? <laughs> At that when they say his eminence is coming, they see Onifade and they see uh, Paul Jeffrey, they mistake them for me. <laughs> they think I follow them. I 
And at the time I wonder, God, why should you be embarrassing people like this? By choosing me. And when you know that you will make me this, why didn't you add a little bit of a step? I was telling some people the day, I think uh, when we were with the, with the, the, doing the induction of the Bowen, new uh, vice chancellor of Bowen, I said, young people, you just say you want to take picture with me, you take picture with me. When you stand by me, you mess up my stature completely. <laughs> eh? And when I receive the picture, in all the picture I've been taking, I will be the shortest. God has given me over all of you is that I should be more humble. I should be more humble. I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. So if God, in spite of all the inadequacies, can still do what he has done in my life, I must always glorify him. It's not of him that we is not him that runs. It's of God that shows mercy. It is mercy that we have received for ministry. And I will depend upon him alone. Because he is not a God that can fail in his choice. And I will not fail him. And I know you are making up your mind you will not fail him as well. Number three. Ministry with fear and trembling. Must be without any intention to deceive, but to bring people to the knowledge of truth. We must be as sincere as possible. When you are sincere, it doesn't mean that you may not be wrong. But when you are wrong, you must be found to be sincerely wrong. Not deliberately following a wrong path. I may be sincerely wrong because out of the right, rightness of my heart, I am doing my best, but my best is not enough. Because I'm a human being. I may come to a better knowledge, but you people are sincerely wrong, it doesn't take God time to correct them. But for me, to be manipulating deliberately is capital punishment. That we saw in fast 4 or that 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul said, when I came to you, I didn't call in the enticing words of men's wisdom but in demonstration of his power and through the, through the Holy Spirit. This implies that there must be no embellishment in our message. Neither should we take advantage of people. No embellishment. Somebody sends something to my WhatsApp. At times, once a while, I look at it. And the Holy Spirit points my... Because WhatsApp is a nuisance. It disturbed me too much. So it may be there, 500, almost 1,000 that have not checked up. I just do like this, I just delete. When, when will I have time for that? Now, but this one, God, the Holy Spirit just pointed my attention, and I saw a woman that was preaching. And he said, Well, it's time to sow seed, time to sow seed. He said, Yes, there are four people here. I can give for 100,000. Now, in that, again, the Holy Spirit was telling him to increase it, to increase it. Ah, for you sell for people. Why, when have they, when have they increased? He started increasing and said, you, he increased it again, said, those, the way he, he increased, they must show it now, now, now. I said, God have mercy. These people are driving others away from the Lord. Why 
through your worshiper come to one the service one day and become tired of the church why should the house of god become a place they would dread because you take advantage of them you are a commercial prophet your belly is your god you are not meaningful with fear and trembling and when you are lying you know when you are manipulating you know somebody is saying there didn't you also emphasize cooperative program i know you will say that but cooperative program is the basis for your being here your church had the option of opting out and not being part of the nigerian baptist convention but once you join you sign the dotted line to be a faithful church and one of the things that makes us faithful is adherence to the cooperative program if you are not cooperating you are disuniting So I'm not telling you about what you don't know of about the basis of our operation. Why should you in a service make collection of money about three quarter part I mean part of the service three quarter hour of the service is fundraising somebody coming from england uh, this early this week on sunday and he said uh, he, he is is tired of the one i will not mention the pentecostal church that is attending he said he's tired of the pastor there that every sunday they must sow a seed 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 he said all the seed we have been sowing when will they germinate <laughs> it says in the day we have been saying that the pastor has never come back to tell us of the fruit of the seed. We are only so and so and so and we don't know when it will germinate. When members are already thinking like that, you are failing. Your integrity is on the line. Beloved, I know God loves a cheerful giver, but God did not call us to act like tax collectors. We may not even care about using force to collect money from people. I'm just using that as an example. Members of the church sometimes run away from service attendance because of fear of extortion by their pastor. This must stop. You cannot allow your belly to become your God. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 to 19, the word of God says, For many walk, of whom I have told you of you, even as far back as that time, I now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross. Why? Whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? They mind earthly things. When you mind early things, you are not ministering with fear and trembling. Do not be a peddler of the word of God. Do not use the word to manipulate. You know what a peddler does? Hello? I lived in Nosodi before when I was working with federal government. As you enter the bus like this, somebody is not going to where you are going, we enter with you. And very quickly we say, Hello ladies and gentlemen, you are very lucky to see me today. You are very, very lucky. 
Look at me. Your problems are over today. Why? Because of this drug that I'm holding. That drug, you can only find it here in this box. It can kill your headache. It can kill your tumor trouble. If you have back pain, this is the, 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 the solution to it. And let me tell you about this drug. If your, your wife is pregnant, I mean is barren, when you use this drug, barrenness will go. And maybe you have a son who is not performing very well in school. His brain is dull. This is the answer to it. Only one drug. <laughs> That's a peddler. A peddler is a manipulator and is a liar. He's only looking for what he will eat. Don't, may, don't force the word of God to say what it has not said. The word of God is good enough for us by what it says it can do. It's good enough for us. It doesn't need embellishment. Number four. To minister with fear and trembling, we have to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. In order to demonstrate the power of the gospel and bring many to the obedience to the gospel, to obedience to the gospel. The letter alone, without its demonstration, is not the full gospel. The gospel cannot be void of power. In Romans 15, 16 to 19. Here are what Paul says about his whole idea of ministering with fear and trembling and the full gospel. Say that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I am therefore where of I may glory through Jesus Christ. In those things we pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by the word, by word, not only word, and by deed. That was Paul's idea of the gospel. To make the Gentiles obedient by word, preaching the word, and demonstrating the word. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. It is not in the enticing words. The word of God has the power to do what it says it will do. But if you don't present the word in that way, the world will not be able to do it. Trust in the word of God. The ability of the word of God should not be doubted. It is not about you. It's about him. When we lift him up, he will stretch out his hands to perform signs and wonders. In Acts 13, 9 to 12, it, it was recorded about Paul. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on Elimas and said, O fool of subtlety and all michi, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to perform the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then what happened? By that act of miracle. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the law. If you, your ministry, your preoccupation is about the word that is void of power, you are not preaching the truth. When you preach the 
truth. The truth will de defend its integrity. And the truth defends its integrity by performing what no man can do. But when you doubt the truth that you are preaching, you limit it. You can only see within your limitation. You cannot see beyond your limitation. This is where Baptist ministers need to brace up. The ministry of signs and wonders is not limited to the so-called Pentecostal church. We that preach the word, we are the people that are expected to witness more signs and wonders on a daily basis. And it is not only in the blind working. It begins with sin so comforted. Turning to the Lord. Working in righteousness. Bringing many to righteousness. And all that things following. The, the, the signs and wonder that follow the, the, the gospel. Is the largest of the gospel. It's additional benefit. Because it's a God that is interested in the spirit, the soul, and the body. I've never seen anywhere where the truth of the gospel is rightly preached and miracles occur and it will degrade the name of the Lord. Never. When the devil saw the power in the gospel without any manipulation, he submitted to the Lord. What a wonder to see the head of a whole city, the mayor of London, becoming converted. Number five. Ministry with fear and trembling requires unshakable faith in Christ for successful ministry. Unshakable faith for successful ministry. We are all aware that without faith, it is impossible to please God. The ministry we are called to, to, to perform is a work of faith. The ministry is full of challenges, confrontations, trials, sometimes lack and opposition. That's the ministry. False accusations are banned. It is by faith alone that we can stand. Therefore, ministers of the gospel, confront your daily intimidation by faith. You will be intimidated by some super permanent and powerful members of the church. Very popular as well. Very rich. Who will not love you and intimidate you daily that you will be sent packing because of uncompromising faith and message. You don't need to preach apologetic message. Don't say, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Sorry for what the Holy Spirit told you to do and to say unless you are acting the flesh. I got to a church when the word of God was coming like thunder. People ran away. They ran away. But they ran back. They ran back. And many of them submitted to the authority of the word of God. Don't care about those who will run away because of truth. But don't be wrong. Don't be wrong. Don't let it be because of your rigidity and foolishness. Don't let it be. Be right with God so that you can be right with men. Very, very important. Be sober. First Peter 5, 8 to 10. Be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, is walking about seeking whom to defer. Whom he receives servants in the face, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, 
who has called you into his eternal glory by Christ. After you have sobered the wife, we make you perfect. We establish you. He will strengthen you. And he will say to you. Amen. But remember it says, you must resist by faith. Number six, preserve your ministry and relationship with God by being watchful in all things. That's how to minister with fear and trembling. Preserve your ministry, your relationship with God. Jealously by being watchful in all things you do. Preserve it all. As I said, your ministry is your life. If you lose this ministry, there is nothing you can do again in life that will make you what you ought to be in life. Some lost it. Some ran away from Nigeria. They thought that they would be able to serve God better abroad. They lost it. Uh, Father and the Lord, Dr. Isolaisia, some of them that lost it in America. The glory and the party totally and completely. Thank God, though, I'm still thanking him for the way he led, he led me. He gave me graphic revelation before I went abroad and said, If you stay a day longer, you will end up in prison. And he showed me that it was my old force wager that I packed when I was going away that I still kicked when I came back with just one, the ignition was on and was carrying me away again. He said, don't trivialize this ministry. This, your first wager is your ministry, it's here. You, you left it here, you are coming back to pick it. So I will defend my thesis on the 11th, I booked my flight on the 10th, and I was to travel on the 13th. I left one day to pack my load. People were saying, If I said, Yeah, I told you, if I said, Yeah, to Nigeria said the money that will do me good is not here it's in Nigeria if I attempt to take any money here I will end up in prison I continue to remind them that imprisonment is waiting for me here <laughs> God has only allowed me to study I've, I've finished it what am I waiting for again <laughs> You are jolly, no? Somebody is begging. Who has come to you in your house to beg for money? And you gave him money. After you are giving him money, he is now peeping through your window inside. What is he looking for? He wants to steal. Don't overstay your visit. Don't overstay your visit. If you should lose that ministry, you lose your life. We saw it. In the life of Nadab and Abihu, and you don't didn't you also see it in the life of Gehazi? Gehazi didn't minister with fear and trembling. Covetousness came in. Watch your life. The moment you lay your hands on that young girl, which is not you are supposed to nurture not to destroy. The moment you lay your hands on that woman, you are gone. Whether you are caught or not, you are already on the way. You have shot yourself in, in the heart, not the leg. I'm telling you. Why are you a minister? Why should you be deceiving people with holy name without holy behavior? Why? You are ashamed to yourself. You are a misfit. You have made a complete repudiation of your call and your training here. You are a disgrace. Why do you want people to 
they treat you and accord you honor that does not belong to you. Running after ladies? Are the unbelievers not doing that? In what way are you better? The Holy Spirit will kick you out of ministry. That is not what you are called to do. You are called into the life of separation. And you must do it with fear and trembling. Are you the only man in life? Don't you see other men, other servants of God? Who, who, who hold their bodies in check? Why can't you do that? If you cannot control yourself, you are not better than an animal. Issues of money. Issues of money. Money in the church. I was speaking with uh, one of our fathers in the law. I said, this is my seventh year in the Nigerian Baptist Convention. I'm looking for one contractor who has passed through my office who will say that I openly demanded half cobble from me. Not me. You know me, Sebe? He's in your mali. No, not me. It can be another person. Not me. What, uh, what are we eat? God will provide. Am I bigger than this? Will it be too difficult for God to, to feed this small stature? <laughs> I believe you are bigger than me. Didn't God, who created you, know your size? And will he not feed you? These two issues in ministry are destroying ministers. They are destroying them. Women and money. Why? Why? With the knowledge of the word of God that we have. Why? Let me finish this message. I've taken time. And this is why I don't want them to always time me. Ministry with fear and trembling will require that we flee like Joseph. The tempter will come. And you don't know how he will come and when. But the tempter will come in various ways. But we need to know how to run. At times it may not be 100 meter dash. It may be a marathon. You have to run far. So that you might not be caught. In Genesis 39, a ministry was handed over to Joseph in the house of his master. And a lages came for him. Is it not a lages? The wife of the fairy master was interested in him. What an opportunity for him to be bragging the town. That he has arrived. Live with me. Live with me. I love you, young man. How will you have handled that? Those people who are not pestering your life to sleep with them, are you not running after them? That was a legend from the devil. Be vigilant. Run from all appearances of evil. But I love the way Joseph responded. 
and what he said he said everything my master handed over to me but this one is outside my job description it's outside completely outside if complete anything i do which is outside my job description is wickedness against god so he knew that that ministry was beyond the one his master handed over to him god handed over that ministry to him out of grace and favor even if it will mean that he will suffer for it he was ready you know that that hand him imprisonment but it was an imprisonment was that was a ladder to his elevation god works in a mysterious way don't mess up your ministry with carelessness like gehazi he did not only mortgage his ministry he mortgaged the future of his children because the lord said none in your lineage will become a minister again why should you do that why should you mortgage the future of your children because of your own foolishness lack of self-control handle the ministry my brother and sister the glorious ministry which was not even handed to the angels which god has handed to us and do it with fear and trembling and glorify the lord god of life who out of our weaknesses yet are decided to know these treasures in the vessel that we are will you bow your heads and let us pray talk to god and say lord today hold me tight hold me tight lord hold me tight in whatever ways i fed you hold me tight hold me tight hold me tight in whatever way i fed you bring me back it's not too late you should be sad for not working correctly you should be sad I've wandered far away from home. Tell the Lord, now I'm coming home. I'm coming home, Lord. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Is there anyone making any decision here today? To make your ministry more glorious. God is a God that deals with us in love. Maybe you discover that a step wasn't right enough. This is the altar. Every year, God has given us this altar where we throw everything down. Do you want to do that? It's personal between you and God. You can just come to the altar. This is altar of mercy. Grace is here. You can just come. Hold that tight to the altar and say, Lord God Almighty. It is me alone when you are calling me. All these people are not there. And I'm settling it with you here. I'm holding tight to you at this altar. That you will perfect my work with you. Make me better in my work. Make me better. I am here before you break me down and remove me. I want to please you with every walk of my life. Can you just walk there to the altar? As I pray for us, for the Lord to perfect His love over us, His will in us, ministering with fear and trembling, going back with a more glorious, more glorious life to serve Him. Yes, Lord, do it in me, touch me. Touch me with your fire. Yes, let me be your man completely, completely. As I pray. You come. You come. You come as eyes are bowed. Eyes are closed. You come. God bless you. You come. Just hold to the altar. Touch that altar. Men anointed have come to this altar. And the eyes of the Lord are on this altar. 
Yes. Just touch the altar. The altar of mercy. The altar of God's grace. Yes. We are will receive power and newness from him. We all will receive great of time while we are falling. Hold on to that altar. We are the steps of the saints of God. Are troubled. And you are tapping from that grace. Jesus Christ is the Lord of this place. This place where we are ministering. Don't know whether you call it altar in Baptist or any other name. But this platform is consecrated. By the power of the Almighty God. Yes. Yes, I want to close it. I want to close this invitation. If you are rushing down, roll down very quickly. Before the door is shut. Yes, it's an opportunity. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That we can share in this ministry of yours. To be part of the instruments that you are using to accomplish your will and your purpose in our generation. We glorify your name. We honor you. Lord, we together with these your children who are at your altar, who have come to your presence, we have not been what you want us to be. One way or the other we have failed you. In one thing or the other, we have not done your will. We ask, oh God, for the grace of renewal. Father, let that fall upon us in the name of Jesus. The little watches destroying our fire. We pray you will consume by the fire of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. May we not be abandoned property in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, in whatever way we have been careless, no pain in no attention to prayer and to your work. I pray that you will change us inside out in the name of Jesus. May we not, oh God, bring death sentence upon ourselves by careless living in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you will make us obedient servants of yours. And your blessings will be ours. Everlasting Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. As this group goes back, the Lord just ministered to me that there are some people here, you are facing fire in your ministry. They let these people at the altar go. The Lord has put his strength and spirit and power in you. Grace of renewal has fallen on you. And you will not be the same again. Your ministry will be glorious.